So one of the things in the U.S., unless it's a really senior hire, talking like CEO, you don't do employment contracts. You really just give an offer letter. And the offer letter is just going to say, hey, here's kind of the salary, here's the title, here's the person you're going to report to, here's your start date. There is a concept in the U.S. called right to work. And what that really means is the employee does not have to stay with the employer any longer than they want to. And they're free to leave a day's notice if they choose to. By the flip side of that is employers are not obligated to keep employees for a certain amount of time. So there's a right to work, so which means the employee has the right to leave when they want to and the employer for the most part you can't discriminate there's some rules gets people really excited from the uk who like oh gosh we don't have to commit for two years it also makes it very competitive for people who don't plan to stay so people will move to another company if they get a better opportunity or better position it's just that recruitment process and then you sign a certain number of years because u.s employees with their right to work on a moment's notice for another company and so that's something to be, be aware of so you would typically have an offer letter so it wouldn't be a contract an offer letter but you would also typically have some additional documents that go along with that so there would probably be a separate non-disclosure agreement, probably a separate intellectual property assignment agreement. Also would say the offer is pending a successful background check. So kind of the process in the U.S., you would extend, you know, I interviewed Clark, he's a great guy, we, we talk, he meets the team, we want to give him a letter, we would give him an offer letter, the detail and the salary, the title, the start date, but it would be pending a successful background check. Then we would do a background check and unless Clark has multiple felonies or whatever the issues might come up, you would typically go forward a start date for him to start the work. And I think having that at will employment in the US is definitely a benefit for making it a highly transient market for recruiting W2 contractors, for example. But when you're thinking about hiring your own direct hires, then you've really got to think about it to the stat around a large percentage of Americans would actually take a pay decrease to get a much better benefits package. And actually, sometimes it is a balance. As an employer, you've only got so much money for a particular role. Do you put all of the money in the salary and offer a really low minimalistic benefits package? Or do you take some off the salary, increase the benefit that you're willing to pay that bit extra and put something on both but I think my advice through what I see is that there is a big advantage of actually if you've only got a hundred dollars taking some of that hundred dollars off and putting it into a benefits package so that person feels truly valued and then you're getting the engagement because as you say with that well employment you could be going through all of this training and induction and ultimately they leave in six months time because they just get a better offer and effectively do what they want and, and leave at the drop of the hat.